Hello. Howdy, howdy. Good to see you today. Hmm. My problems. Do, 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 do. Good day. Good day. All right. <clears throat> Time to get rolling. I hope you are doing great. Just a touch tardy today, but that's okay. We'll wait for some folks to catch up. Uh, your questions, your comments, your thoughts, we'll handle them <clears throat> as we get them. A couple of uh, quick um, programming notes. Tomorrow, remember, is being, it's Thursday. It's our live stream Bibles, uh, which is our live, um, our... Um, Thursday fireside chat. So we'll sit down and have a conversation tomorrow behind uh, my HT, my HT dot higher things dot org. Check it out. My HT dot higher things dot org. Have a look at it. And um, that's where this Bible study is streamed first and foremost. Uh, that's where I um, uh, look at the comments first before I look at Facebook. Uh, so go ahead and go to myht.higherthings.org. Tomorrow, 1130, is our fireside chat. I hope you're having a great day. 16.24. So let's roll to John 16. We've got lots to do. Oh, the Bible study software is, is loading up. Remember... Um, Special thanks to our veterans. Uh, super thankful for our veterans today um, and all that they did to give us the freedoms that we have to be able to just do this. Uh, this Bible study wouldn't go on in China. They wouldn't allow it. They'd shut it down. And um, uh, they'd shut it down. They would shut it down. So we're super thankful for that my little computer is loading the bible study software doing the best it can and if it doesn't load then i got a real issue but it'll load eventually <clears throat> there we go good not sure why it's so big but hey we'll go from there we'll make it work we're in John 16. All right, here we go. Well, that text got a little smaller overnight make it bigger for you we'll make it bigger for me too let's get rolling all right <clears throat> i said these um i said these things in 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 parables or in um i have spoken to you in parables or in um figures of speech so in parables or figures of speech that's the way i've talked to you in parables or figures of speech Hi, Karen, the Lord be with you. All right, so I've spoken to you in, um, I've spoken to you in figures of speech. Um, the hour is coming when no longer I will speak to you in figures of speech, but par asia, I will, um, uh, I will plainly and openly announce to you concerning my father. In that day, you will ask in my name. And I do not say that I will ask the father concerning you. For the father himself loves you. 
because you have loved me and believed, perfect, that I came from God. This is so very important. This is so, so important for us to sort of ponder this morning. Um, first off, Jesus lets the cat out of the bag. Yeah, I've talked to you in parables before. That's what I've been talking to you. And I've talked to you in parables before. I've talked to you in parables. Um, uh, I get it. I've talked to you in, in parables. Um, I've done that. But there's going to come a time in which I don't talk to you in parables anymore. I speak to you plainly. I, I'm, I plainly lay out the um, what's going on. That time's coming. And I don't say to you that I'm going to ask the Father on your behalf. Like I'm, uh, I'm, uh, like I'm a, uh, uh, the patron saint of lost keys that you call on me and then I answer and answer your prayers. I do not say that. Now, that's not what I say. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what's going on. That's not what's going on. No. The Father loves you. What a great comfort. The Father loves you. I want you to think about this. The Father loves you. Um, he loves you. Not because you love him. No. The Father loves you because of me. Because you love me. Because you love me, the Father loves you. It's that simple. Because you love me and you believed in me. So the Father's love flows through the Son. Believe in the Son. You have nothing but love from the Father. Reject the Son. You have nothing but but um, grumpy from the Father. Judgment. This is so important. In a universe in which we're, we're trained to believe that every God's the same and that, that God just loves everybody. Here, God lays out specifically who he loves. He loves those who believe that the Son came into your flesh, lived the life that you should live, and died the death you deserve. Salvation and, and heaven and God's grace and all of that is, is hinging upon Jesus. No Jesus, no love from the Father. No Jesus, no You get what you deserve. No Jesus. And you're you're in your sins. I mean, the I the idea that the Father loves you. He says it. The Father loves you. Because you have loved me. Everything depends upon the Son, and that makes it maximum comfort. After you get over that it's not about you, because this is... The, after you get over the the, 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 the the shock. Oh my goodness, he doesn't just love me. He loves me because of Jesus. After you get over that, there's a lot of good gifts here. See, we, we want it to be about us. He loves me because I'm lovable. He loves me because I'm so fun. Because of the dimple. When uh, my son Thomas was younger, he didn't do his homework one time. And so he's driving to school and, he, and his mother asked him, did you do your homework? He said, oh, I totally forgot it. Well, where is the homework? Well, it's at home. So what are you going to do? Well, I guess I'm just going to have to use the dimple. Um... We're, we're sort of, we have this sort of mindset that God determines his love for us because we're so, you know. 
because we're just so, you know, you know, us. And because we're so us, people should know and people should believe uh, that, that God loves us because we're so us. You're so vain. You probably think this song is about you. Yes, we do. Because we're so us. And so when he says here very clearly that the Father loves you because you love me, as if everything about life and salvation and faith and grace and the forgiveness of sins and eternal life all hinges on Jesus. We are on verse 27 of chapter 16. Move in right along. Give me a stink eye. Good catch, bud. So... But, 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 but once you get over that, think about the comfort. When you lay down in bed and you look at the ceiling and you can't sleep because of how bad of a person you are. When your sins are before your face and they horrify you. And you realize that not only are you concerned that God doesn't love you, but you're most concerned that you'll get caught. And that makes you even more ashamed. Just. And Jesus comes in and says, the father loves you. I don't have to go to the father and ask and, and twist the father's arm and use the dimple on the father to get the father to love you. I don't have to do that. Instead, instead, the Father does indeed love you because I love you. Oops, missed. The Father does indeed love you because I love you, because you love me. And to put salvation and grace and and all of it, on Jesus. What comfort. So when the night, when the night is long and full of terrors, when you look at yourself and you're like, I'm not a really good person, not at all. I'm not a really good person, not a bit. And you are frightful for your, for your own salvation. What comfort that because the Father loves the Son, because the Son is loved, He loves you. Because you believe that He came from God, He loves you. Faith is then the very righteousness on which we are accounted righteous before God. The Father loves me in spite of an of the cause of my sins. The Father loves me because of Jesus. It's just that simple. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're trying to sell you timeshares in um, desert land in Florida. It's just... Or swamp land in Arizona. They're just selling something. The Father loves you because of Jesus. Don't miss that. Do not miss that. The Father loves you because of Jesus. And that is amazing cult comfort. That's amazing comfort. I came from the Father, 
and I have come into the world. And now I'm leaving the world and going to the Father. Does he hate us without Jesus? What a great question. Um, Maggie asked, does he hate us without Jesus? Uh, does he hate us without Jesus? Well, what are you without Jesus? A lot of times, Protestant theologians will say, uh, he loves the sinner and hates the sin. As if he can sort of dissect us into parts in which, um, I like that part of you, but I hate that part of you. Um, and the answer is, he both loves you and hates you, Maggie, outside of Christ. He did send his son while you were yet sinners, because he hates nothing that he's created. But it is also true that he hates sin, and he hates sinners. And so he hates sin and he hates sinners, law, but yet he sends his son, gospel. And so um, you have... But that's not about you. That's about God. And so the answer to your question, Maggie, is law and gospel. Yes, outside of Christ, he hates sinners and their sin. And anybody who tells you otherwise isn't reading the scriptures. He loves sinners. Well, he loves sinners in Jesus, outside of Jesus. But you are not outside of Jesus. You are in Jesus. And in Jesus, he loves you because of Jesus. Well, what about the collect on, on Ash Wednesday? He hates nothing he's created. That's true. In a gospel sense, he sends his son. So we so we've gotta we gotta be we gotta be very, very clear on this. That outside of Jesus, God doesn't love me. That's the law. Outside of Jesus, I take my sin and I rub it in God's face daily and much. I give him the bird, the finger. I give him everything. I moon him. I do all sorts of evil against him. And I do it publicly and I do it privately and I do it because I'm my own God. And yet, he sends his son, which is the movement between law and gospel. So the law answer to your question is, Maggie, he hates sinners. The gospel answer is, he sends his son. Well, how does that work? How does he do both? Well, that's the law and the gospel. That's the law and the gospel. For us, there is no God apart from Jesus. So we see everything anew in Jesus, says Pastor Ray where God loves, justifies, and blesses sinners. In Jesus, he's a friend of sinners. In Jesus, you can sing the song, Jesus is a friend of mine. Jesus is a friend of mine. All right, got the... Um, I hope that answers your question. Law, gospel, that. Great question, Maggie. Great question. I came from the Father, I'm going to the Father. That's what's going on. And the Father loves you. And I don't have to, to twist the Father's arm to be good to you because he loves you because of me. What comfort? Can you get over that comfort? Can you beat that comfort? Can you be? So when you are sitting in bed and you're like, God hates me. What if he hates me? The answer to that question is Jesus. If God hates me, then then the only hope that I have is the suffering and death of Jesus. And that is a certain hope. That is a sure hope. That is a, that is a, uh, I can, I can, oh, oh, the, uh, the Chicago White Sox announcer, the old Chicago um, White Sox announcer on a home run. You can put it on the boards. Yes. Yes. There it is. Home run. There it is. Because of Jesus. And then, Everything relies on, flows on, sits on Jesus. Because in that gospel, oh, here it comes. Once you understand that God loves you because of Jesus, you have an unending gospel. You have an unending. That means he must love me. He can't damn me because Christ died for me. 
He can't damn me. The devil tells me he da- he's going to damn me. The, the, the world tells me I'm going to be damned. The, my sinful flesh tells me I'm going to be damned. All of it. Fight against me. And I, and I lay in bed at night looking at the ceiling, worried that I'm going to hell. But no, because of Jesus, because of the cross, I can't go to hell. I can't go to hell because of Jesus. In Jesus, I must be saved. We hear that over and over again, and we've heard it from the Protestants. We've heard it from the Protestants. There's no other name given under him by which you must be saved. You get your stuff together, Maggie, and you must be saved. You lift up those bootstraps, and you fight it out, and you must be saved in Jesus. That's so wrong. So wrong. What, what, what must be saved means is in Jesus, Tim Rake can't go to hell. In Jesus, Maggie Newton can't go to hell. In Jesus, George Borkart, who is the absolute worst of the worst. Sometimes when people tell me off, I feel like Dr. Luther. It's like, somebody needs to make you a doctor of theology because you can look at the dung pile and you can realize that it stinks. And yet, in Jesus, I must be saved. Can you, can you fathom that? Can you even comprehend that gospel? Well, what you're saying that is that then um then people just sin willy nilly and they get in because of Jesus, you antinomian pig and liber- libertine. No, that's not what I'm saying. But you better hope so. You better hope that people are saved despite their sinful lives. Lives. Better pray that they are. Because who's the greatest sinner? You are. I am. So you better pray to God that because of Jesus, he saves even you. Oh, so you are saying that sinners go to heaven. Yes. In Jesus, they must be saved. So they could just sin willy and then they'll just get forgiveness afterwards. No. But you do that, and you better pray to God for mercy. Well, I'm not talking about you. Uh, me, I'm talking about you. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how that goes, hey? Okay. That's how that goes, eh? That's how that goes. You're not really talking about yourself. You're talking about me because that's the way the law works, right? The law is really about me, not about you. The truth of the matter is, when you stay in your sins, when you live in your sins, when you... When you want to, when, when, when that's the life, the life that you live, you set yourself outside of Christ. You deny your identity. You make your identity your sin. I'm an adulterer. I'm a fornicator. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, dis, I'm disobedient to my parents. I despise the preaching and teaching of God's word. That's then, that then is my identity. I'm a sinner. That's my identity. That's what I make my identity. I'm a homosexual. I'm a pervert. I'm a gossip. I'm a, I'm a cheat. I'm a thief. I'm a liar. I'm a I'm a dis, I'm I'm a misuser of his name. I'm an idolater. Did I use that one already? You know what I mean. Come on, man. You know what I'm talking about. You better hope that God saves sinners. And the good news is that he does. In Jesus, outside of Jesus, no salvation. But you're not outside of Jesus. You are in Jesus. And in Jesus, in the forgiveness of sins, in your baptism, God saves even you. Me too. Me too. So the God who hates sinners still sends his son. Not because of the sinners, but because of his son. And those that love the son, the father loves. And those who hate the Son, the Father hates. <laughs> yeah, I'm already better at the Biden voice than I ever had with the Trump voice. That's funny. That's really funny. Oh, man. Um, gotta love the... Um, just gotta love the... The, the, the disciples on this one. His disciples said to him, 
Oh, it do behold now you're speaking plainly and not using parables. Woo! Finally, finally, you're just laying the smack down for us and we're, we're picking up what you're putting down. Finally, we're, we're finally getting it. We're finally getting it. No, no, they're not. No, no, they're really not. They're really, really not. And now you're speaking plainly and you're not using flat figures of speech. We finally get it. And now we know you know all things. You didn't know it before, but no, now we, now that you're speaking plainly, we get it. <laughs> and we do not need to question you. They were questioning before. This is why we believe you came from God. And Jesus, as is his way, um, Jesus, as is his way, doesn't go, thank God you got it finally. Let's move on to bigger and better things. Now that you get it, we can move on to what we've really always wanted to do, which is sanctification. Do you believe? Artipiste ueta. Do you believe? It do. Behold, I got my own behold for you. The hour is coming. Indeed, it has come. when you will be scattered. Each of you to his own home and will leave me alone. But I, but kai uk e mi monos, I am not alone. Hoti ha pater, but the father is with me. So he doesn't do the thing is like, wah, Thank God you believe. I was so worried. What would I, how can you form a religion if no one gets it? And the apostles are like, yeah, we finally get it. And he's like, do you now? Really? Do you, do you really get it? Do you really, really get it? What's your fig leaf? What's your fig leaf? What is it you're putting your trust in? You say the words, I'm a filthy, rotten sinner, but you believe that you're a good parent. You say the words, I'm a filthy, rotten sinner to the core, but you're a good husband or wife. You say the words, I'm a filthy, rotten sinner, but you're an honest, honest business person. What's your fig leaf? What are you holding back? What are you hiding? The only hope that we have, the only salvation that we have, is that what's underneath our fig leaves is forgiven. That our marital status is hashtag forgiven. That our parenting is hashtag forgiven. That our, that our work is hashtag forgiven. Because when the worlds come tumbling down, when the walls, uh, when the walls come tumbling down, and we look at our lives and realize that we are utter and complete hot messes of stupid. And that we look at, we, we look at God all the time. And we're like, now we get it. And we don't. Now we understand and are on board, but we're not. When that happens, the only hope that we have is that God would love sinners because of Jesus. That God would love us because he, because of him, because of Jesus. That God would save us because of Jesus. That we don't have to use Jesus like a saint to manipulate God into what we need him to do. If you could, if you could talk to your dad about this, that would be super duper helpful. The 
The only hope that we have is Christ. His forgiveness, his light, his salvation. That he would be such a God as to save even us. And then, and then the comfort comes that in Jesus I must be saved. Even me, despite me, kicking and screaming against him, fighting him all the way, he goes to the cross and he dies for me. Even me. Oh, get it now. We're on board, Jesus. Really? Because the hours are going to come. And what's his hour? What's his hour? The crawl. The cross is coming and you'll all be scattered and you'll all run your own way and you'll all abandon me. But my dad won't. What about Father Elo Elo Laba Sabachthani? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What about that? Well, that is as he suffers and dies on the cross before his father is with him out through the beatings, through the mockings, through all of it. And he believes that even when his father abandons him, that he won't abandon him. And he believes that for us. Another fig leaf. At least I believe. At least I believe. Which makes me better than all the other people who may not believe. Not as well as I do. The height and depth. The great. Oh, oh, how great is my faith that I'm super faithful to God all the time. That's not the way the hymn goes. Oh, how great is thy compassion, faithful Father, full of grace, who with all our fallen race, in the depth of degradation, you had mercy so that we might be saved eternally. Tomorrow, we'll start with verse 33. Remember, remember, remember. I'm sorry, tomorrow we have our fireside chat. Tomorrow, fireside chat. Friday, um, I'll be buying a house, and so um, uh, Pastor Finker will be will start you with verse thirty three. Um, write that down. Verse thirty three on Friday with Finker, which means Finker could be at top speed, and all he can do is finish sixteen and seventeen. Yes, giving me eighteen when I come back from my house. Um, house. Um, our house purchasing and, and, and here's the other thing. Um, if this gospel is so sweet, if this gospel is so merciful, if this gospel is so unbelievable, Even you and me are saved. Even you and me. With our failed parenting, with our failed um, uh, uh, marriages, with our failed um, with our, our failed relationships, with our failed friendships. And, and here's the best of all, with our failed ministry. Because that's a fig leaf too. I'm at least a good pastor. That will save me. Nope. Nope, I'm not. Only Jesus saves me. Only Jesus saves me. Only Jesus saves you. I will see you tomorrow behind my HT for our fireside chat. Anything you want, you'll set the topic, and I'll just simply pontificate and have a discussion with you. More or less pontificating, more having a discussion. And we will talk about these things. And um, Friday, you will have Pastor Aaron Finker. Remember to go to higherthings.org slash store for stuff like this. Isn't this super cool? And this, dare to be Lutheran, which means dare to believe this gospel. This gospel alone saves you. Store.higherthings.org .higher things, slash store. Check it out. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. I'll see you in a hop, skip, and a jump tomorrow.